Good All evening. Right. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday, Facebook Live. Yes, we're both back this time. Amen. We are both back. Both back strong. Glory. We welcome yes. you. Hello, hello, people. Hello, Lucretia. Lucretia. Hop on, like, share, get the word out. We are going to be talking about, um, hi, Diana. We're going to be hi, talking Diana. about wisdom to recover all. So we'll give you a few moment, moments to um, hop on and, uh, yeah, like, share, comment. Hey, Pastor Harold. Pastor Harold. Welcome. Welcome, folks. Welcome, welcome. Come on in, like and share. Hello, Lucretia. Hello, Tiffany. Tiffany. Welcome. Yay, yes, we are back and we are back strong. You know, I just wanna let y'all know that women, we are not having a Bible study on Friday night. The Church Center app was sending out a notification, and I got it canceled. But for those that may not have seen it, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it we are not having it this Friday night. Hello, Angel. Angel. Hello, Angel. Like, share. It's really good to share this, you guys. Get the word out. Let people know that Dominion Worship Center is out there and alive and well. <laughs> Amen. Wisdom to recover all tonight. That's what was on my husband's heart. Glory, glory. Y'all have a good Father's Day. I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Why don't you pray and we'll get, uh, we'll jump into this. Okie dokie. So, Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Father, for the topic, Wisdom to Recover All. May we have ears to hear what you want to say to each and every one of us because the instruction of the Lord could be different for all of us. So, Lord, let us hear and know what to do. Give us guidance and direction, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would anoint our words and Holy Spirit bring to remembrance what things need to be said in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, breathe life over this broadcast tonight. Go into homes and minister to people in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for those that are watching tonight and those that will watch in the future on a yes, replay. Jesus. We speak blessing over your life and we declare that you will recover all, that you will come out of a season of loss and recover, and you will receive restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so what uh, what kind of sparked this message was that uh, for the last couple of days, uh, different times, little things just kind of, the Holy Spirit just kind of drops things into your spirit, and, and uh, you think about some things. And so the word recover came to me several times. And, uh, and then the scripture where David, the Lord told David, uh, inquired of the Lord after he'd been through some difficult things where, you know, all of his stuff, his family and all of their stuff had been stolen. And uh, so he, uh, his soldiers, the people that were with him, they wanted to stone him. And, uh, and so he inquired of the Lord and said, shall I pursue? Mm -hmm. And uh and, and the Lord told him, pursue for you will overtake them and you will recover all. And I believe that, that uh, due to this last year and a half or so that we've been through, where everybody has been dealing with the COVID thing, I mean, it's been a national thing, international thing, but not only that, there's other things that people have been dealing with personally. Mm -hmm. And there's situations and, and circumstances and uh, I believe when you take that and you couple it with the whole COVID stuff, you know, it can really get you down and you can really lose focus, okay? And I believe that we're in a season where God wants to do some amazing things, 
but we are what we think. And so we have to have to look at things correctly so that we respond correctly and that we can believe. It's like, uh, you know, it's, I was thinking about the COVID thing. I remember when it started and they said, we're going to do, we're going to do this shutdown for two weeks just to flatten the curve. And the two weeks turned into a year and a half. And so it was never over as fast as some people thought. And uh, we still kept, kept believing it was going to be over. It's going to be over. And of course, they, they, the, uh, the media, I think, did, did a job of telling everybody, uh, you know, be fearful, be afraid. No, use wisdom, use common sense, and uh, do the right things, okay? And, and, uh, and so I believe that, that what we need now is we need to encourage people to let's get back into the game. Let's get back to where, what, what were the dreams that God gave you before? Mm. What was the vision that God gave you before? What, you know, because if he gave you a dream, gave you a vision, gave you purpose and, and direction, okay, it may got delayed, but it wasn't denied, okay? And so we, we have to remember that, that what God begins, he that's begun a good work in us is going to perform it or finish it till we go home or Jesus comes back, okay? And so we have to trust God, believe God, so that we can get to where we need to be, Amen. Mm -hmm. And so there's a verse in uh, Isaiah chapter 42, and in verse 16, he talks about, I'll bring the blind by a way they did know, did not know. I will lead them in paths they've not known. I will make darkness light before them and the crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. Okay. And so Jesus said he would never leave us and never forsake us. Okay. And so what we have to understand is that, that uh, God is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us, right? But we have this battle that goes on up here. And we, so we have to really uh, have wisdom to know how to maneuver and recover and get back what God intended for us to be and do in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So in verse 22 of Isaiah 42... It said, he says, but this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes. They are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey and no one delivers for plunder and no one says restore. Hmm. I believe this is a season of restoration where God wants to bring restoration to us. Amen. And no matter what you've encountered, there's people that are out there that have lost loved ones over this COVID and all the other stuff. And, and we have to remember that God is still for us. Amen. And so he says, these are people robbed and plundered. I believe people have been robbed and plundered of dreams, visions, mm. talents, and abilities. Okay. I mean, we got into where we were on a lockdown we were antisocial. We weren't allowed to be around other people. And so we kind of have to, we kind of drew everything back. And basically people went into a survival mode mm -hmm. instead of life. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that what God wants to do, he wants to bring a release to us so that we can enjoy life. Amen. And do everything that he wants us to do. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And so God has a plan for good and not evil, okay? And, and because you belong to him, all right, that we need to find out or rediscover if we have to what God's will and purpose is for your life. Amen. Mm. And if you're going to, if you're going to find your way of, of for way uh, in God for your life, first off, you have to start. Okay. <laughs> so if you're watching tonight and you don't know Jesus, all right, give your heart to him, ask him to be your Lord and savior and let him guide you. Cause he said he will continually guide us and direct our steps. Amen. And, and so uh, we need to realize that he's going to guide and direct us, 
all right? And uh, in Genesis uh, chapter 12, uh, he goes to Abram and he says, get out of your country, get away from your tribe, and, I'll, I'm, and go to a land that I'm showing you, okay? Now, what I want to say here is that there's times that God will tell us to make a move, shift, do something, okay? And many times people read that verse and uh, it may not be a rhema, but they try to make it a rhema, all right? I just got to make a change. No, you only make changes if God says so, okay? okay? So in Genesis, Genesis 26, okay, here's another time where, where God told someone to do something, amen? Genesis 26 and verse 1 it says, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that when it was in the days of Abraham and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt, live in the land which I shall tell you. Okay. And he says, dwell in this land and I'll be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all these lands and I'll perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father, and I'll make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven and I'll give your descendants all these lands and in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commands, my statutes and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar, okay? It's a famine. Common sense or the thing that would press us would be go down to Egypt, go somewhere where it's better, okay? But look at verse 12. It says, Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him, and the man began to prosper and continue prospering until he became very prosperous. Hallelujah, amen? And so we, what we have to do is, the, the point I'm trying to make is, it's not doing this or doing that, it's find out what God's telling you. Okay, if God hasn't changed your vision, changed the direction in your life, then get back in the game and start moving forward to do what he asked you to do before. Amen. Uh, you know what, dear? Something that comes up as you're preaching here is that oftentimes when we are crying restoration, we're praying restoration, right? right. And Lord, recover all. And we want God to just drop it out of heaven. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. we Okay, God, you do it. Yeah, God, you can do anything. But there is the working of miracles where he uses us as you get your wisdom, as you get your direction. There's action to recovering all. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hearing you. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not enough to just pray. You, if you're praying, then you should be able to hear the voice of God yes. in that quiet time. And he should say, stay put or go do this or start this or forgive this and so on and so forth. There is something in our part in our, and in our heart that God wants to speak to us mm -hmm. to get us to the place where he can restore and where things will be recovered to us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and Isaiah, pardon me, Psalms, <laughs> Psalms 138, verse seven and eight. It says, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me, your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. The point I want to make here is the Lord will perfect that which concerns you, okay? You remember when, when uh, Saul, who became Paul, was on the road to Damascus and he encountered the Lord and, uh, and uh, got knocked down blind. And he says, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he told him, go into the city. And he says, I'm going to show you what you're going to do, okay? And so the thing is about God, he doesn't ever show us everything. He gives us bits and pieces. He guides and directs us, amen? I'm sure that when Moses was walking out and, and saw the, the, the bush burning and he walked over to the bush, he never thought he was gonna end up back in Egypt, okay? And, uh, and uh, but God had called him to do that. And so that's what happened, amen? And uh, 
Psalms 100 verse 3, it's God who made us. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture, okay? We've been bought with a price, the Bible says, okay? And so we've been bought with a price and, and, and he has invested in us. And so you're very important to him, all right? Some people got to shake off this whole COVID stuff and, and all the fear and everything else. Just kind of shake it off and, and overcome it. Amen? Amen. Psalms 37 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. They're ordered by the Lord. And so sometimes it's difficult in what seems hopeless situations, but God will direct your steps and get you through those things. And he will, he will do things in you that you never thought. Amen? And sometimes when you're in a difficult situation, too many people try harder with their own wisdom, ideas of their own knowledge, and they fail to inquire of the Lord, like, Lord, what do I need to do? Or they don't listen or don't get counsel. The Bible says there's safety in the multitude of counselors, okay? And so if you're going through something, you want to talk with somebody that's been through it, somebody that has godly wisdom, godly insight, understands how God works, so they can help to, to counsel you, help to uh, grow you, and share wisdom with you that's going to help you in what you're going through. Amen? Amen. And so what we have to remember is what we need foremost, first off, is we need the Lord. We need the Holy Spirit. All right? Come we on. need Him more than anything else. And uh, I wrote this down. Who are you traveling with? Who's your traveling companions? Okay? Wow. And... Uh, there's in the Indiana Jones, I think it was the last crusade or something like that, is when they, they go into the cave and, and they get into that room and there's the, there's the old guy that's been watching over all of this stuff and they have all these cups. Mm. And, and the, the old guy, the, the German guy goes in and he says, choose wisely. <laughs> and of course he doesn't choose the right one. He chose the one that was all, you know, glitter and gold and everything else and and he ends up dying, and the guy goes, he he chose poorly. All right, and so you have to you have to choose who you travel with. Okay, and uh, uh, your friends can help build you or help pull you back. All right, and so sometimes as you're going on with God, you have to you have to look at things because sometimes you may have to change some friends. You may have to, some of your friends that may not stay the same, okay? You may spend less time with them, all right? And, and so uh, you just have to understand that. And it's not that you don't like them, all right? You can try to bring them along. You can encourage them. If they come to know the Lord and get transformed, I mean, you can still be friends with them, but you have to limit their input into your life or the influence on your life, amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so we need support, okay? And... Uh, uh, we we need people that we can depend on, people that we can count on. And uh, God can put good people in your life, gifted people to help you. Some of them you'll discover on your own, okay? They're neighbors, coworkers, people that are in your church, okay? And some you look for and you seek out. Uh, if you start praying, God, send the right people into my life. You also need discernment to know if that person was from God, okay? Mm. You know, it's like we, we pray and we want, we want the right people in the church, people that can help, encourage, build, all right? And, and, but you have to discern when some new person comes in. I mean, don't be suspicious or whatever, but if a new person comes in, you really got to discern. Did God send them and, and, and are they here to help us in Jesus' name? Mm-hmm. That's good. Honey. Now, sometimes he sends people that have problems and, and they're there so that you can help them. Yeah, because remember, the church is a hospital. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it's an equipping center also. But first of all, they usually come in needing lots of love and prayer. And that's what we're there for. Yep. And one of the things you're going to need is courage. Mm. Courage. Courage is mental, moral strength to venture to persevere and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty, okay? Because we're always, we're going we're gonna to encounter difficulty, okay? And, and you can say, well, don't prophesy that. I'm not prophesying. I'm just making a statement, okay? Uh, we're going to encounter 
things that that are going to challenge us and whatever. And it's like when James says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, okay? For they, it's there to build your faith, okay? And, and so we have to realize that the things that happen in our life are there and they can help strengthen us and give us insight and encouragement in all the things that God wants to do in our heart. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. In, uh, in Acts 27, you remember when uh, Paul's on the boat and, and uh, he, he told them not to sail because, you know, the, it was late in the season and, and they had a favorable wind, it says. And so looking at that favorable wind, they thought that was, that was the, the open door to, to sail on. And they, they left and uh, Paul had said, no, nah, I don't think I would do that. It turns out they get into a storm and they're throwing things off the ship. They're not eating, okay? They're, they're, they're fasting, and Paul's praying. And the Lord tells him, go tell them. And so he goes up and he tells them, you know, it's gonna be just like I said. The Lord told me we're gonna survive this thing. The ship will be lost, but not a person will be lost, amen? And so uh, many times, you know, thank God for people like Paul, okay? And sometimes you need people in your life when you're going through a storm and maybe you can't see what you need, but they have insight and God can give them words of wisdom, words of knowledge that will give you some insight into what's really going on to help you in that time. Amen? Amen. Those are good friends. Hallelujah. Amen. In mm -hmm. uh, Proverbs 25, 12, it says, like an earring of gold in a, in a wise man, a, is a wise man's rebuke to a listening ear. We need people that are not afraid to tell us the truth, mm. okay? Don't surround yourself with just yes people, okay? And, uh, you know, it, it's, you need people, not that are always challenge you, not that are trying to control you, but those that will tell you the truth, okay? You really think you should be doing that? Here's why I don't know whether you should. Okay, mm -hmm. and and so they're they're helping you along, amen? amen. And they'll correct you, if necessary. Now, what happens? A lot of people they want to. If someone corrects them, they cut them off. Okay, how dare them tell me that I was wrong? Well, no, it doesn't mean they're. That's right, Lucretia. It's accountability. We need to have accountability, and so it's good to have people. If you just have yes people, man, they can lead you down the wrong road. You know, let me interject there. That's the beauty of marriage. The beauty of marriage. Okay, come on, husbands and wives. Um, oftentimes, the, uh, the spouse can't see it. and um, Or vice versa. Yeah, both. Exactly. And so, uh, and it's quite obvious in their life because it keeps coming up over and over again. But um, sometimes we don't receive from our spouse and, and we need to um, just be open to hear that, right? Right. For, you know, both ways. Mm -hmm. um, because they live with us and we, we can see our, they can see our blind spots um, quicker. And that's where spouses need to pray for their spouse and intercede and help. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be picky and always pick things apart, but you should be praying for your spouses. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important for single folks to have really good friends and and have accountability in the church because, because you are alone and you don't have that. And so it, you have to reach out and seek for those um, mentorship, those good um, relationships that will help you see your blind spots. Mm -hmm. In uh, Proverbs fourteen twelve, it said, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end, yeah, it's not good. And also Proverbs 21, 2, it says, every way is right in his own eyes. So we can, we can be blinded to what we think is right sometimes. That's why we need other people to help us, or your husband, your wife can help you too. Amen? Yeah, it's so true. Uh, we also, we need experience and those with experience to help us on the road, along the road, okay? Uh, you know, it, it, there's nothing like experience, okay? People that have been through things, people, people that have encountered problems, people that made mistakes 
and learn from their mistakes. I mean, they can have great wisdom and share with you uh, some of their mistakes. You see, sometimes it's not that everybody has to go through the same stuff. We can learn when other people make mistakes and they share it. Yeah. You know, you talk the power of a testimony, the testimony of overcoming, but there's a testimony of here's what I tried and I failed, but I recovered from it. Okay. And it tells you, don't do it. Don't go there. That's good. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, we need someone to model or be a role model. Okay. Sometimes there's, there's people like, like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And so there's Christians and leaders and, and other, other people in the church that they work with, you know, and, and they, they live in such a way and walk in such a way that, that is an encouragement to you, okay? I remember, well, it would be uh, uh, probably uh, 55, 56 <laughs> years ago, 57 <laughs> years ago, whatever, but... Uh, when I was in, I was in, uh, in high school and we had a shop class and the first year that we had shop class and it, what it was, was they would take, and I remember, uh, the, the, the shop, uh, teacher had taken an aisle, taken a wood, wood, piece of wood, cut out an aisle, put a little shelf on it. And, and, and he showed it to us and he says, now I want you to make the same thing. Wow. This is your pattern. Follow the pattern and do. And so we had to make it and, you know, cut it out with a little coping saw and sand and all the other stuff. And but it was following the pattern. OK. And in the scripture gives us a pattern to follow. And there's people that are following that pattern that you can also follow and learn from. Amen. And you say patterns. Where did you get that? Well, even in the Old Testament, they had patterns uh, Moses was given a pattern on how you build the tabernacle. You know, there's patterns, uh, there's ways that um, we approach God. There's there's patterns in worship, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so there's nothing wrong with a pattern. Right. There you go. And the other thing that I see is uh, the fathers and mothers being role models and examples. That, you know, I just encourage them again to stand up and be uh, those examples because your children are watching. Other family units are watching you. Yep. You know, well, how do they do that? How did they get through that? And um, so don't discount that God isn't raising you up as, as an example and a role model mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, in Hebrews 6.12, it says, don't become lazy, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises, okay? You know, another thing I wrote down, it's hard to do what you've never, what you've never seen someone else do, you know? Boy, that's true. It, it's, it, you know, people go, you, you learn by experience, okay? You learn by working with other people or walking with other people and doing life with other people and being in church with other people, and, and so you learn things. And so, you know, don't become lazy, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Mm. Amen. That's good. Another thing is our values. Your value system will help guide you. Values are principles we value. That's a guide for behavior and can help you to know right from wrong. Okay. Uh, the values we live by are worth more when we pass it on. So we pass our values on to other people. Roy Disney made this statement. He says, it's not hard to make decisions when you know what your values are. When you know what your values are. Amen? Yeah, because that's where you, you have the scripture in you and you know that, well, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wrong. That's, a, that's, wrong. that's against my moral character. That's mm -hmm. against what the Bible says yep. to do. Yep. You know? It's like committing adultery, um, things like that. That's very blatant out there. But the scripture clearly says, don't do that. So, um, you know, you don't even look that way. You just, you cause that temptation to be uh, changed and yes. change, renew your mind and so on. So that's what we're talking about when you have morals and you have values. Like I just... 
Like every family should have some core values. Mm -hmm. Every church has core values. Like, you know, for the, our churches, you know, we honor the Holy Spirit. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We honor one another. We honor the fivefold. Mm -hmm. You know, we honor the prophetic. We love worship. Um, you know, all those kind of things. So there's values everywhere. Mm -hmm. Another one, and uh, Lucretia has already mentioned this, is accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a newer car, newer cars have computers, okay? And the computer monitors all the main functions of the car. Everything the engine does, mm -hmm. fuel mixture, timing, uh, transmission shifting, all of those things are monitored by a computer. Computer monitors the air conditioning and all the things that run inside the car, okay? And, uh, and when it doesn't, do, doesn't work right, then it, it sends a code and, and a check engine light comes on, whatever, and you can, it'll tell you what's wrong with the, with the thing, all right? We need people that will hold us accountable that can help us, you know, keep things right, amen? We need others that can help monitor our progress and keep us on track. Again, not controlling us, but growing us, okay? There's a big difference. There's some people that want to control. It, and it's not to control. It's to grow and teach people how to do it themselves. Amen? Mm -hmm. And that's what we do here on Wednesday nights and Sundays and yep. other classes is we want to grow you. You should be looking at your progress like you mm -hmm. should even have grown from a month ago. Of course, a year ago, I'm sure you've grown. But even a month ago, allowing God to change you from the inside out and then let people see your good fruit, you mm -hmm. know. Are you, are you tasty? Like, wow, I want to be like that person. Mm -hmm. You know, they're full of love. They're full of mercy, justice, and, and all of that. I, I want to be like them. And that is okay, but just don't idolize. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And, and when she talks about progress, it, it's like uh, a few weeks ago, I was thinking about progress and moving and, and, uh, and there's two, two uh, situations I thought of. And one is, have you ever seen them move a house? Mm. They have to jack the house up. The house is huge. Mm -hmm. They put it on trailers and they have this truck that pulls it it has extremely low gearing to where it, it pulls it, but it's not doing 50 mile an hour down the road. You know, mm -hmm. it's only going a mile or two an hour and it, it, it takes it real slow because they want to make sure it gets there in one piece, okay? Right. Another one is if you've ever seen them take a rocket and take it to the launch pad, the machine that yeah. moves that, the, it's moving it you can barely see it move. So sometimes we don't think we're making progress, but we are making progress. And, mm -hmm. and depending on the season you're in, sometimes it, it's slower in this season or the one season, and then it, it accelerates, okay? Because God wants to make sure you get it, amen? That's really good, dear. I like that. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 4 talks about two are better than one. Okay, I'm not telling everybody to go get married, okay? But, but who are the people in your life that are there for you, mm -hmm. okay? Close friends, whatever, okay? Who are, who's pulling for you or are they pulling you down, okay? They pulling for you or are they pulling you down? Hallelujah. And uh, they, they can't be afraid to tell you the truth. Okay, yeah. uh, the, the, the scripture says in Proverbs 27, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Okay, doesn't mean they purposely wound you, but they may tell you something that when he first tell you, you go, I don't like that. <laughs> but they're a faithful friend. They told you, Yeah. you know, to help you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You want people that show you more of God than you already know. Mm. Show you more than you already know. Warn you when you're headed for trouble, okay? Help guide you when you don't know what to do. Cry when you suffer loss. Celebrate with you when you win. Mm -hmm. Amen? 
You have two kinds of people around you. You have some that are growing and some that aren't, okay? You need around people that are growing, people that are growing, and growing in the right things, the right stuff, amen? Mm -hmm. Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Won't separate just because somebody made a mistake, okay? Friends are friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them. Mm. Hallelujah. That's good, honey. And remember, what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. All right, Proverbs chapter 4. A couple of verses on wisdom. You know, while you're looking that up, dear, uh, it just keeps coming up in my spirit about <coughs> Ruth and Naomi and um, Naomi's um, husband. And he, it, it, there was a famine going on in the land. And as you started off tonight with recovering and wisdom to recover, and just doing something to do something. I feel like Elimelech, that's what he did. Is what there's a famine in here. God never told him to go to Moab. Mm -hmm. He never told him to go. But he's thinking I'm the provider. That I hear it's better down there. There's food. But but um where he was supposed to stay was uh that was his promised land. It just happened to be that they were going through a famine. They were going through a season yep. of trial and yep. testing. Come on. And see, and that's the thing where we just want to book it when it gets difficult mm. without staying the course and, and seeing, God, what are you t teaching me? And what, what, what do you want me to learn? And, um, you know, you will cause me to prosper in the day of famine. And so yeah. what happens, they go and they lose their two sons. Talk about needing to recover. Naomi was never going to recover those two sons, but she needed to go back to her promised land. She needed to go back where her husband had left them. Mm -hmm. And so if we are going to recover all it is important to hear the voice of God. Sometimes that you need to stay put and sometimes it's get up out of your country. You know, mm -hmm. so what is good for one, you cannot. Mm -hmm. See, this Come is on. where the Bible is teaching two very distinct, different ways to recover. Yep. You see? So uh, I love that about the Bible. You know, he'll say this and then you'll read something else and it seems to contradict, but that's not it because we are a complex people and he, he is, he, he's always giving instruction, but he wants us to get to know him so he n can tell us as an individual what he wants us to do. So it, you cannot compare yourself one to another. Come well, on. that one's, um, you know, going and doing that. So I guess that's what I got to do. Because see, that's the caution about when, you know, imitate me as I follow Christ. You know, you, you just have to hear, hear the word of the Lord. When we says imitate, it's talking about character. It's talking about values. It's talking about his relationship with God, him walking with God. And if you want to imitate that, then you will be able to recover all. I'm telling you. You, you can't compare yourself one to another, and you have to stay in your promised land. That's why Bakersfield, for us, was our promised land. It may look like to other people in this city, and I get irritated whenever I hear it. Mm -hmm. And we even heard some movies the other day, oh, something about, oh, yeah, go to Bakersfield. I'm like, dog on it. It was a slam at Bakersfield. Yeah, do not say it, and it wasn't cast away either. It was another one. It's like Hollywood has it out for us, and I break that in Jesus' name. You know, because I guess we're one of the hottest places for even millennials to stay because that's um, yeah that, that's what they're saying that the statistics yeah. is because it's a good place to live for them it's a good place to buy a home and so on and so forth so you know you can't believe the lies of the enemy and you have to do what God is telling you to do and what your promised land is amen, amen. I think I'm done <laughs>
<laughs> but that I just get fire in my bones. She, she got on her soapbox there. All uh -huh. right. Proverbs fourteen thirty three says, "Wisdom wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding." Okay, and and so uh, in Proverbs three verse thirteen it says, "Happy is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who gains understanding." Okay, many times. Uh, when we're in a, a situation, we're trying to recover from something and, and, and get our feet back on solid ground. There's been so much stuff that's been thrown at us, been driven into our, our minds. And so we got to renew our minds. We got to really put the word of God in us. And, and the more understanding you have, the more wisdom you have, the more you'll know what to do. Okay. And it says, uh, Happy is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Hmm. Length of days is in her hand, in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Did you hear that? All her paths hmm. are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and so, you know, we need discernment. The discernment is to perceive, grasp what is not clear, okay? Then we, there's a, the word comprehension, the, ca the capacity for understanding fully. Interpretation is clarification and illumination, okay? When we get understanding that we understand what's the right thing to do, okay? What's the proper thing to do? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Proverbs 4, verse 5, it says, Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and all you're getting, get an understanding. And understanding is the comprehension, the discernment, the interpretation, okay? And so when we get wisdom, see, it's one thing to, uh, well, let, let me put it this way. You know, have you ever heard people talk and they, they use these big words, okay, that you have to look up in a dictionary, See, you can use big words, and there's nothing wrong with using big words, but if people don't understand what you're saying, it doesn't benefit them, okay? I mean, it, it's like, you know, you need wisdom. you got to have understanding so that you know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Exalt her and she'll promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace. <coughs> got a frog. A crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I led you in the, in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> and so... We need to really, you know, place a high value on wisdom. Hallelujah. And uh, when we discover and imply the wisdom and insight, the understanding to our situations, what we're going through in life, we find a way through and we find a way how to recover and do what we need to do. Amen. And so when we, when we see that it's not hopeless, all hope is not lost, Okay, hope in God, believe God, and watch and see what he's going to do in your life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So we must recognize the value and the need for the missing pieces of wisdom in our life. You see, when there, I look back at times where maybe you did something and you go, well, that didn't turn out real good. Mm -hmm. All right. I love it when, when the Lord kind of takes you back and walks you through it and says, now I want to teach you. Where did you miss it? Mm -hmm. here's, what, here's where you missed it. I was talking to you right there, but you 
let some what someone else was saying override what I was telling you. Okay, and so so and it was it, a lot was to do with you know I didn't have the peace. You go out with joy, be led forth with peace. Mm. All right, and uh, not driven, led. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. So God wants to give you wisdom. God wants us to recover through this whole thing that we've been through, the personal things that you encounter in life, okay? And, and uh, let me say this. You're out there and some of you are looking at some things and you go, this is a hopeless situation. There's nothing hopeless with God. Amen. All right? There's nothing hopeless with God. By faith and patience, we inherit the promises, okay? And we can have faith to believe, okay? But if you don't have patience, what happens is you get impatient. I can't wait anymore, okay? No, by faith and patience. Faith and patience, like, get together, lean into each one another, and they support one another so that you can go through the time, the season, the process, learn what you need to learn, grow in what God wants you to grow in, and recover and know what God is going to do in your life is good. Those promises of God are yes and amen. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm reminded of Sunday, the prophetic words that came forth mm -hmm. of long-awaited promises, long-awaited breakthrough, because I feel breakthrough tonight. Um those long awaited that seemed like it was stubborn, that it didn't move, that God <coughs> is coming and showing off and making changes and causing there to be a recover, mm -hmm. a, a recovery. Yep. Uh, I, I know for me personally, I was telling my husband about this. We, we recently um, had something major break through in our lives, personal lives. And, um, I remember the night before, the night before that it happened, I, it almost took my breath away. I couldn't handle the situation anymore. And it was almost like I breathed my last of the situation. Little did I know that I felt like it was an intercession, but I totally gave it to the Lord. Totally, totally, totally. And then out of the blue, impossible situations turned like that. And oh, what joy. Oh, what joy. And so I just say it, that it's, it's a trickle down effect, that there is breakthrough for you guys, that you are going to recover what the enemy has tried to steal from your life. You know what? I say tried to steal because it isn't all the way gone in Jesus name. You are going to have restoration and you are going to have recovery of love, of finances, of relationships, and so on. And I just speak that breakthrough over Amen. your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. The anointing breaks the yoke. And there yeah. is an anointing in this season. As you get with God, and you get close to Him, and you get the wisdom of the Scriptures, and you get counsel, God <coughs> is going to lead you mightily. Amen. And uh, what uh, Lucretia posted there uh, just a couple minutes ago, impatience causes us to do dumb things. <laughs> Amen. And that's wisdom right there. Impatience will cause you to do dumb things. <laughs> the other thing I feel is that many times when we, when we go through something, we've got to get through it. Okay. And, and uh, uh, the, <laughs> it says, Forgetting those things are, which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead, okay? There was a movie, I think it's called The Gumball Rally, and they were racing across the United States. These two guys got in their car, and the first thing he did, he reached up and he took the rearview mirror, tore it off, threw it out on the street, and the other guy says, what are you doing? He goes, we don't need to know where we were. We need to know where we're going, hmm. Okay. And so if you're always looking back, all right, there's things we can learn from what we went through and things like sure. that. All right, we understand. But if you're always looking back, trying to relive the past or, you know, make someone pay for our past, 
you're not going to progress. You're not going to go forward. You won't recover that way. You have got to release, move forward, and glory to God. See what God can do for you. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Father, for just a fresh, fresh touch from God. Lord, that, that people will feel you on their life. And God, that you would give them wisdom and insight and encouragement. Lord, that they can hope again, they can believe again, and they can advance and have wisdom to know what to do, that we'll make good choices, good decisions. We'll do the right things that's gonna benefit not only us, but those around us, those we minister to. So Father, bless each one we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. And if you don't um, know Jesus, mm. oh, mm. now is the time. Just ask for forgiveness. Yes. Just ask for forgiveness and say, Lord, help me. Amen. Lord, help me. I receive you, Jesus, into my life. And I just speak life over you in Jesus. the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us. We'll be back next Wednesday night at 7.15. We'll see you Sunday morning in church at 10. God bless you. God bless you all. Good night.